Hello, my friends. I'm going to be continuing on with side two of this infinite highness. As you can see, her has us making quite the commitment again with no compromise. Put off this mortality and to put on with acceptance the spirit as you see in this second side very helpful so herb continues now but now I the living spirit in the midst of you flowing through you pulsing through you and teaching you that I am present and that I am powerful and that I come quickly because I am already here and I dissolve all that is unlike myself. I am the I of your being. I am the I that you are. I am no other. This I is going to liberate us from all form of limitation. But only if you have opened out a way for it to flow through your consciousness. Only if you have stood daily identifying as I. The Spirit of God. It will not flow through a mortal being. It will not flow through a human selfhood. It will not express. It will not speak. It will not move the mountain. I only flow through I. The Spirit of the Lord God is your name. And when your consciousness is alive with that knowledge, you are anointed to preach good tidings unto the meek. Who are those meek? It is you. It is him. It is her. It is everyone who has submerged the human ego. I have no human mission. You have no human mission. That is your meekness. Your mission is to do the will of the Father. Thy will be done. And in that meekness, the word of the Father within is preached to you. To those who have opened the way with the inner desire to serve the living spirit alone. Not to serve mankind, but to serve the living spirit. Blessed are those who have surrendered the human ego. They shall inherit the earth. And through Isaiah, the spirit is announcing like a trumpet that it is present. It is alive. It isn't tomorrow. It isn't the second coming. It is an in the second coming. It is present right there, now, here, everywhere. I am come to all those, to all who are meek, and meekness is those who have surrendered mortal self. Then the puffed up ego is no longer there. We're no longer standing on the corner telling spirit which way to go, directing traffic, influencing spirit, or persuading it. But other, but rather, we are its self expressing. The rhythm of the universe flows through as your living being. I hope you're getting a feeling of that, of what Isaiah is pouring forth here. The Spirit of the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. 
He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. Those who are separated from spirit are the brokenhearted. The human race separated from spirit is brokenhearted. To bind up the wounds of those who are brokenhearted. Only spirit can remove the dilemmas we face on this so-called earth. And even though you cannot change the world, you can change your consciousness. If you remain the one who is separated from spirit, you are the brokenhearted who is still bruised. The availability of spirit is being stressed, and the power of spirit to transcend every human ailment, every human deficiency, and ultimately to lift you out of the fourth world into the fifth, into the flow of spirit as your identity, which makes the transition, and it's important that you know it makes the transition. To proclaim liberty to the captives, now, these captives are all human minds which are lingering in the world mind. The human sense mind is the captive. And of course, the so-called body it creates is a captive within that mind. And here you see that he, the liberator, is not Jesus. The liberator is not a man. The liberator is not a religion. The liberator is not human faith. The liberator is the following, is the flowing of spirit through you as your identity. That is the liberator of the captives. And we who are not spiritually conscious, we are the captives. to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Just like Peter, the opening of the prison to them that are not bound. When the handcuffs fall off Peter, when he's free, when he can move out of that prison, we know he has found his soul body. This flow of spirit in you is creating that body, which cannot be held captive, which alone makes transition. Now then, we who are not willing to renounce mortality have not caught the meaning of the infinite way. And although we may be more advanced than some others somewhere, we are still lingering and vulnerable. And the purpose of these meetings are to clarify and to accentuate that if a trace of mortality remains, we still have that heel, that Achilles heel. And therefore, I, Spirit, must live in the identity that I am not ever a mortal being. I must diminish the sense of mortality and magnify the spirit. My soul doth magnify the Lord, said Mary. And if the way is getting too narrow, then the love of the Father has not yet illuminated the way for you. But if the challenge is there and there is a ready response of the heart to walk that narrow path, the way is there, and the illumination does come. And to help you, Spirit makes another step, because some of you have made your inner decision to move in the way of the Christ at all costs. And hopefully that's because you have made that decision the way will open. It will. And so those who have completed not the work of the first three commandments, but the understanding that they will follow those commandments, are then treated 
to the fourth. When you are willing to accept only perfect cause, that is the one, the perfect spiritual universe, willing not to live in its so-called opposite, which is the material universe, and to know that it is but a shadow of truth, and then to make that final decision that because I am going to live only in the universe of spirit, I must be spirit. I must identify with spirit. I must act as spirit. Then spirit shows you the way. Again, another step. And that's the step I want you to take home tonight. It says, honor the Sabbath day. The fourth commandment tells you how to fill and fulfill the first three. Honor the Sabbath day. And you say to yourself, what is the Sabbath day? Man thinks it's Sunday, that he works for five or six days, then on Sunday it's the Sabbath day. But it isn't. There are six days of creation, and then the Sabbath day is the seventh day of creation. Honor the seventh day of creation. And that is the way you find the strength, the courage, and the capacity to renounce the belief in mortality, which God did not create. Honor the seventh day. Honor the perfection of God. The day in which God rested because all was finished. And honor the finished kingdom now. Honor the Sabbath means honor the finished kingdom. Honor the seventh day of creation. Accept it as a present fact. Live consciously in the finished kingdom of perfection, knowing it is present. And that's where you get your help. It's not striving to find anything, not but accepting it as being present. You could go on for another 5,000 years find, trying to find the treasures of the kingdom, but accept them as present here, now. Honor the Sabbath. And so in your decision to renounce mortality, materiality, it is not just a turning away from one thing, it is also an accepting of another. It's not a negative, it's also a positive. And it becomes a one action, a negative positive. One action which is the acceptance of the presence of perfect spirit everywhere. The seventh day becomes where you live in your consciousness. That is the Sabbath. And in the living consciously in the seventh day, you live in a present perfection of spirit in all ways. And it's only by aspiring to this higher level of the seventh day that you're ultimately going to be lifted up to the spirit. You must overshoot the mark. And if you aim high enough and live consciously enough in the presence of the seventh day of perfection, you find the strength to shatter the dream and break through into the realm of soul. Because only the seventh day, which is the day of Christ, can you can take you up to the next rung of Jacob's ladder. Let us meditate now on the meaning of the seventh day. Seventh day means perfection is. The day of God's rest meant all is now perfect. It includes the six days of creation. It includes the six levels of consciousness so that you don't have to go through each one individually, but rather, in accepting the fullness of the seventh, all else is integrated and synchronized without your personal effort. Live consciously in the finished perfection everywhere. That's an automatic rejection of every form of deficiency or imperfection. 
It's a denial of the presence of perfection, of human perfection, and you're trusting the false sense mind which says, it isn't there, I don't see it, I can't touch it, I can't spend it. We don't do that. We honor the seventh day. We honor the presence of the perfection of my spirit in all things. We don't honor the finite. We don't honor the limited. We don't honor the opposition. We honor that which is unopposed because it is the only. Perfection has no opposition. It is here. That is not mortal, is it? There's no such thing as mortal perfection. <coughs> and you honor it because you are not mortal. You see? You're being loyal to what you are. You're being consistent. If I am the spirit, I must honor every spiritual quality as present, as perfect, as functioning. And I cannot honor its opposite and be I the Spirit, because then I'd be using the Lord's name in vain. So you must take the fourth commandment with the third in order to make it work. I cannot honor the graven image. I cannot honor the physical form. I cannot honor the def deficiencies of the physical form or the physical life. I must honor the Sabbath. The seventh day of creation is present, finished, perfect, working here. This is where you live in your consciousness. You're literally hanging your hat on a star. You're reaching far out into the fullness of being and accepting it as the finished fact. And that consciousness is ultimately going to shatter the beast, the world mind. The non-existent hypnosis which makes us not worship the reality of being and forces us into a false sense of life. Now please take home then, tonight, that unless you have hitched your wagon to a star called the seventh day, the Sabbath day, the perfect day, as ever-present, you are rejecting your own spiritual identity. You'll find that in some unique way you have set in motion the wheels that are obeying four commandments at once when you honor the Sabbath. Now, last night you worked with I am not in the form, and this morning you worked with I am not in the form. You'll discover that when you work with the Sabbath or the sab seventh day, the perfect day, although you're not consciously working with I am not in the form, you'll have the same result. While you're working with the perfection of spirit, you're not conscious of form. And so, the result follows just as if you had consciously tried not to recognize the existence of the form. And ultimately, you find this a better way. But you must know that there are times when you are conscious of form that you must become unconscious of form. And if you will work on the seventh day level, you'll find that the consciousness of form begins to dissolve itself. Now that's another way to meditate, to take the Sabbath or seventh day of perfection into consciousness. Dwell upon the meaning of it until it carries you beyond human thought and you just rest in the word feeling the rhythm of the universe. I think perhaps we can accept that for tonight. I would like, if you can, to move right into the seventh day, the first thing in the morning together, 
and begin our work in the seventh day of creation. And so if you will try to make that preparation and come with the awareness that this is the consciousness that will best serve for that very morn morning, it will help. And so until then, many blessings. And that's the end of infinite highness. So you know this takes tremendous love of the Spirit. And just as he says here, though it comes with everything necessary, it brings with it, of course, all the omnipresence and omnipotence as we acknowledge the I. But the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Is upon me. As we accept that and rest in that seventh day of perfection, and as Herb has taught us all along, that it's the acceptance of this which is so necessary instead of the intellectual gaining or attaining. We're not doing that. The human sense of self is not, we're not falling into the trap of trying that, well, maybe it'll be better tomorrow. We're not trying to have a better anything humanly. We're acknowledging and accepting present perfection, present reality. It's so great to be with you. Talk to you on the next one. Talking soon.